Hi, this is Ken Crawford. You know, most of us use either Registax or AVI Stack, and they do have some excellent wavelet type sharpening methods within the programs themselves, and they do work very well. But I just want to show you an alternative method that I believe that you'll be happy with. What's nice about this, I'm currently using Photoshop CS5, but actually you can use this particular filter as far back as Photoshop CS2 and you can get some great deals out there on older versions of Photoshop. Many of you know about or have used Unsharp Mask and in its current form it's been around a long time. The problem with Unsharp Masking is it applies the same amount of sharpening to the entire image and it's one of the reasons why you have to use usually an iterative process so you can sneak up on what you want to get the best results. Smart Sharpen can control the type of sharpening as well as control the amount of sharpening applied to the shadows and highlight areas at the same time. I think you can get much better results than Unsharp Mask with one pass and not having to use an iterative process. So let me show you how that works. This image that I have is just a raw image. I have not applied any wavelets or anything like that. It was taken to us through a 60 millimeter Coronado with a 3x Barlow. So anytime I apply any type of sharpening, and in this case we're not going to use any of the fancy tools that are available in CS5 like Smart Objects. So what I really want to do is just create some layers here and apply the sharpening to the layers. That way if I overdo it, we can dial back the opacity to taste. So let's go ahead and duplicate the layer. I'm going to name this layer Smart Sharpen. Let's go ahead and open up this filter. You find it under Sharpen, Smart Sharpen. Okay, when I open up the Smart Sharpen filter, if you haven't used this before, this is maybe the way you see it. To be able to utilize all the functions, we have to go to the Advanced tab and turn that on. And what that will do is it'll give us three different tabs. Another thing I want to do is make sure that the More Accurate checkbox is checked. So what we have here is now we have the image broken up into three different luminance value cutoffs. The tab called Sharpen actually sharpens the mid-tone ranges and that's really where you want most of your sharpening to occur. Then you have control over the shadows and highlights. What I want you to do is realize you have three different sharpening algorithms here. Gaussian and now Gaussian blur algorithm is very similar to Unsharp Mask. Lens blur and motion blur. Well we don't really have a problem with blurring here so much of motion in one general direction. What I found is that the algorithm to remove the lens blur is actually one of the best algorithms for this type of use. So now we're all set up and what I like to do next is find a feature that I want to concentrate on zoom in so there's a sunspot and I've zoomed in to 300 percent. So first place we want to start is with the amount of sharpening applied to the midtones. This is again where you want most of your sharpening to occur. Now let's look at some of the controls here. First off of course is the amount of sharpening. That's pretty much uh, the strength of the sharpening that you're going to apply. Slider goes from 1 percent all the way up to 500 percent. The next control is the radius. What you're doing with the radius is you're telling it how many pixels you want to spread this sharpening out. It's a combination between the amount of sharpening and the radius that's going to give you your different results. So this is where I really want to start. What I'm going to do first is we're going to just overdo it here so I can illustrate some points. Now what I found with most of my images that a pixel radius somewhere between 2 and 4 seems to work well at this particular image scale. So I'm going to go somewhere in between, around 3, and make sure the preview box is checked. So what can happen is you're going to see the, the change happen in the preview window and also real time on your image. So I'm going to start boosting up the amount of sharpening. And as you can see, as I take it all the way to the end, the effect that a three pixel radius with this sharpening gives you. 
that's actually quite a bit of control. Now watch what happens when I start bumping up the radius. Now what I'm going to use is the up and down arrow keys. So I can go a tenth of a pixel at a time. And you can see how quickly things can go awry. But what I wanted to show you is what's happening. Now in our particular image we have small scale stuff and larger scale stuff. What we want to do for best results is kind of find a happy medium between that. And I'm actually going to take this back to somewhere around 150 percent. Now if you click on the preview window it removes the, the filter. You release it you can see the result. So you can already see hey there's some pretty nice sharpening here. So what I like to do now is go ahead and just zoom in five to six hundred percent or better because what I want to do is start applying a combination of radius because I want to see how wide of pixels I need to include in the sharpening to sharpen the large scale and the small scale. Hey that's pretty good. I'm going to zoom back because what I've done is I'm watching my noise when I start creating a bunch of noise then that's when I want to back off. I'm also what I'm going to do look at this little edge filament here which is pretty cool at about 300 percent. Now as you see if I crank that up wow you know I'm actually bringing in an even a bit more detail if I pull the radius up on that but now you can see I'm starting to bring in some noise. So there again, I'm finding that I like about the three pixel radius or so. And I'm going to take this back to about oh, 170%. Now that I have the sharpening in my mid-tones where I want them, I'm going to start controlling the amount of sharpening in my highlights and shadows. So let's look at the shadows first. What we have on both the shadows and highlights is we have three different controls. We have the fade amount, and the fade amount is exactly the way it sounds. I want to remove a certain amount of sharpening in these areas with the fade amount. So the higher the setting, the more sharpness decreases. I like to be a little bit bigger radius than what my sharpening radius was. But you can experiment around with that. Now the fade amount is the amount, again, that I want to decrease the sharpening. The tonal width value amount that you're going to be moving up from the shadows into the mid-tones. So if I put a large tonal width on this, you can see that the amount of decrease of sharpening has expanded out into the areas that I don't want. So I'll just dial that back because I do want some in there. So hey, that's about 10%. I'm getting some sharpening. There's some nice transitions there, but I'm starting to see some detail inside the sunspot. Now the highlights, you do the same thing find a very bright area, remove only about 30% because I just don't want any harsh sharpening on these saturated pixels. But I want some sharpening to occur. And very little tonal width there because these are very small details. So now that I have that done, I can go back to my sharpening for its final tweaks. We'll start messing with you know, how much sharpening this image can take and what kind of radius. To me, that looks very harsh. Dial this back. I like the small scale items to be nicely sharpened. I'm watching very carefully to make sure I'm not dragging up noise. And I like to keep my transitions fairly smooth. So at this point, I think I'm pretty happy with that. I can check the preview button on and off. And hey, you can see the difference. Now I'm going to add an adjustment layer, curves. I'm going to clip it so when I turn this on and off, both the adjustment and the sharpened layer turn on and off at the same time. If you want to know more about clip layer masks, I have other tutorials on that. And I'm just going to make a few small tweaks. So what I'm trying to do is just give it a little bit of contrast adjustment. There's before and there's after. And of course there's many other things you can do, high pass filtering, HDR toning and all that type of thing. But I just want to show you what's possible with just one filter within Photoshop.